next couple of drills, we're going to add the ball to it. You're going to notice the horizontal position with the ball as well as the vertical position. Take a look at some of these drills and make sure you use them as much as you can in your practices. The first thing we all learn about dribbling the ball, swimming with the ball with your head up or head down. Try your best not to have your arms touch the ball. Your arms are only a safety guard for the ball. If the ball, you end up losing it one way or the other, your arms are now going to push it back in front of you. The most successful way of moving as quick as possible through the water is allowing the ball to sit right in front of your wake that you're creating in front of your head. It's extremely important that you learn to do this at the fastest rate possible. If you're just cruising through this at a 60 or 70 percent rate, when it comes to game time, you possibly could be losing the ball because you're not used to moving the ball at a 100 percent rate like you should be in a game. So a change left and right drill with the ball. Look how the player is moving the ball underneath the water. He's not putting his hand on top of the ball, he's grabbing the ball from underneath and maneuvering it to the opposite side. Now he's able to do this with his leg strength, is with the breaststroke kick, as well as his opposite hand is pulling his body, his upper torso, in the direction he wishes to go. The other great thing about this is every time he changes directions, notice he has a strong breaststroke kick to force him in the new direction he's going. Something for those advanced players that can grip the ball. Go ahead and do this drill by gripping the ball, swimming from your left and right. Another thing that we struggle as players is picking the ball up at a young age. Here you'll see our offhand pickup. Our offhand pickup is a player who's driving four or five hard strokes going from his offhand, his left hand to his right hand and elevating from the horizontal position to the vertical position. This is a great drill to work on either in passing drills or in shooting drills. The other key element to here is that offhand. It's not putting your hand on top of the ball or needing the big hands to be able to grip the ball. The other thing I tell my players is never to pass the ball from one hand to the other. When the ball's in the air passing from one hand to the other, you don't have control of it. You are allowed to shovel the ball to your other hand. So for a split second, both hands can be touching the ball. So this is our swim to vertical drill. Going from a counterattack position of swimming the ball and a front court moving the ball up the court to straight to a vertical when you need to make a pass up lane or down, down the pool for an open man. Here you'll see a lot of white water from his arms and his legs, pushing him as fast as possible, as well as when he goes to the vertical, his leading leg for a right hander, his left leg is going up underneath his left shoulder, which is giving him the great foundation to go as high as possible. Notice this player, how high he gets up. You can actually see his rib cage get out of the water. The vertical to swim drill. Here you are seeing a player in a faking position or a vertical passing position. The player goes from this position to a swimming position. Now what's crucial here is the breaststroke kick that gets him generated in that right direction. It's crucial that your legs come up into you. That allows you to have the most maximal strength when you're a breaststroke kick. Again, notice the work rate of these players. If you're doing a drill at 100%, you can transform that into the game and be ready to perform at the highest level. This is a great drill that we learned back in Europe is to reach free with your pop in the ball. So reach free pop. Every time your hand releases from the ball, do your best to put a backspin on the ball so the ball comes back to your other hand. This is a great drill to work on all with ball control as well as position control in the water. You'll see in the underwater cameras that the arm that is taking the stroke is working simultaneously with the breaststroke kick. This is giving the player great power and energy to move forward through the drill. Here you see a reach free pass drill. This is the player doing the same thing that he was doing with the pop drill but now he's passing to himself. Make sure that you're taking a freestyle stroke. Don't just keep both hands out in front and you're just doing your legs. This is actually you're pulling with the water with that breaststroke kick and catching the ball out in front. Keeping that ball alive keeping it moving. You ready to get tricky? Now try passing to yourself in the back of your hand. Doing the exact same drill as the passing drill, but now you're passing to yourself in the back hand. The best way to do this is to push your, your knuckles down, and that way you create a cup on the back of your hand. Again, in these reach-free drills, your energy is coming from your legs, your breaststroke kick. Make sure you're utilizing that. This is a fun way to put a little bit of ball work in with a leg set. Here you have the reach back pass. You're doing the backstroke with the leg beater kick, same motion with one stroke of the arm and your legs are working simultaneously together. At the same time you're passing the ball back and forth to each hand. It's very important that you don't throw the ball too high and lose control. Stay in control and keep the ball at a short distance, that way you can maintain full body control as you're moving through the water. The triple threat position, or the tripod position, is when the ball is up 
to pass, to shoot, at any moment. Notice the great foundation of the body here. You'll see the player moving in a 360 to be able to see at all different angles. His leading hand is way out in front of him as far as possible with a nice scrolling motion. The scrolling is actually allowing him to get maybe a half or an inch, even that much higher. If you notice his leg position, one leg is directly underneath him. His other leg is slightly up and pushing him forward. This is going to be the power behind the shot. In that underwater camera, you'll really see all three limbs separated and balanced in the water. They're, none of them are too close together. This is allowing him to have great balance if he needs to move at any split second. What I try to tell my players in that leading shoulder, if you can create a little air pocket between your shoulder or your armpit and the water, you have reached your max potential in height. In the arm position, the elbow, we really focus on getting it above the ear. Anytime you drop your elbow below the ear, you're putting a lot of strain on your shoulder. This leads to surgeries and other injuries. Keep that elbow up. Your arm is a whipping motion that your body is generating the power from. Here in our dive moves, creating new passing lane or shooting lanes. Going from a vertical to a horizontal back to the vertical position. This is a very crucial drill to learn at a young age. We practice this every single day in our university practices. If you notice a player here, he's moving dives to his left, to his strong side, to his right, coming across his body, moving forward dives, as well as backward dives. If you're able to move in all directions, it'll give you time to recognize or visualize the game ahead of you. Here you'll notice the leading hand. His off hand is leading him in the direction of everywhere he's going. It initiates the foundation for his body to catch up. If he doesn't have that hand there, he'll fall flat and he won't be able to surface himself in the vertical. That hand is extremely important for the success of getting the full max potential of your height. Dives to throwdowns. This is a great drill to go 25 yards or 30 meters. You can dive, go back to the vertical, snapping your legs back underneath you. Notice here the knees, once he goes in that horizontal dive, his knee is coming quickly up inside of his midsection to allow him to have that foundation to go vertical. Here, after your second dive, you go up and you throw the ball down as though you're shooting the ball or passing the ball. Do this with force. That way you can work on your lower back muscles as well as your stomach muscles. Here we have the standard position for an elbow control. This is when the offensive player is protecting the ball in the perimeter. It's very important to notice that they're face to face. Too many times you see at a young age, they go back to back. And when you have back to back, there's no vision of the cage. The great thing about elbow control is now you have control of your defender. This is very important to be able to maneuver either a give and go or receive the ball in the perimeter. Notice the player here lifting his head up and checking out the vision of the game, whether the two meter man is open or who his next pass is going to be. The one thing I want you to notice in the underwater camera, notice the bodies are in a 45 degree angle. They're both pushing into each other. If one player drops his hips, they're going to lose advantage or lose spacing. The offensive player is doing a great job here is keeping the ball the furthest distance away from the defender. This allows the offensive player to react if the defensive player jumps with a big breaststroke kick towards him. So here you see also, besides the elbow control, you can also put your forearm into the chest. Now you're allowed to do this as long as the elbow is underneath the water. As soon as it rises above the water, you may be called for an offensive. Here you see the offensive player throwing a stiff arm, keeping his arm extended and pushing on top of the guy's shoulder. This is clearly an offensive foul. You must have a bent arm or elbow control. Stay away from the stiff arm. This is absolutely the wrong way to protect the ball in the perimeter. Notice the offensive player's back is to the defense. He has no vision of the game, and when he does try to turn around and look, he loses ground because he goes into the vertical. The other thing is the defense now has the same exact reach, if not just a little bit less, than the offensive player, which allows more 50-50 balls. Keep the ball as far away as possible from the defensive player. To conclude our fundamental drills and basics, passing, movements in the water, I want you guys to really recognize how much we've been moving on our drills. Never are we stagnant or standing in the vertical all at one time in the drills. If you can create movement in every drill that you do, you're going to be one more step ahead to elevating your game to the next level.